Say hello to the new Honda Accord SI. Okay, I'm kidding, it's not the Accord. But in fairness, just look at how big the Civic SI has become. It's massive. Anyway, what's the rest of the car like? Let's go for a drive and find out. So under the hood of the Civic SI, you will no longer find a high revving VTEC engine of the old days. Instead, what you will find is a turbocharged engine, so you do get boost. It's a 1.5 liter four cylinder turbo, and it produces 200 horsepower and 192 pound feet of torque. At least that's what the spec sheet says. I have read quite a few reviews and seen a few videos of people dynoing the Civic SI and on average it produces about 10 or 15 more horsepower than what it says on the sheet. I can't verify that for myself, obviously, so I'll just say what's on the press material. 200 horsepower, 192 pound-feet of torque. In a car that is actually pretty light by modern day standards, this engine has plenty of power to keep you entertained or to get you into trouble with the 5.0. Boost builds up at low RPM, so you don't need to rev the heck out of this engine to get the most out of it. And with the short ratio 6-speed manual that it's only available with, it really likes to rev. In fact, you do have to shift it into third gear in order to reach 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour. Speaking of the transmission, the shifter has a really satisfying mechanical feel to it. But unfortunately, I cannot say the same about the clutch. It's light, so that's good for daily commutes, but it doesn't really provide any sort of resistance change once the clutch does begin to bite. So you can't really tell where that bite point is as well as you can in, say, the GR Corolla or the Toyota Supra with the manual. As a result of this light feeling clutch, I have noticed myself over revving the engine when I set off from a stop, particularly on hills. Now the car does have hill start assist and it does work as it was designed to, but on certain inclines where it's not steep enough to engage this function, I, again, I do notice myself over revving the engine and slipping the clutch a little bit more than in some other manual cars. On the plus side, this transmission does have an active rev match, so every time that you downshift, it will blip the engine to the correct RPMs. Oh, and also one more thing about the shifter, not that it's a big deal or not, but on cold and crispy winter mornings this shifter is ice cold and i imagine it is super red hot on hot summer days with such a small engine the 2023 honda civic si is actually very fuel efficient it is rated for 8.7 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 6.4 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway during my time with the car i averaged 7 liters per 100 kilometers helping with the fuel economy is the auto start stop function I know a lot of people don't like it, but there is a button on the center console to turn this feature off. However, this system works as it was designed to, with the engine shutting off when the car is in neutral and your foot is off the clutch pedal. Once you press on the clutch pedal, the engine fires right up. Standard with the Civic Si is a limited slip differential, and every time that you put your foot down out of a corner, you can feel it working. It does a great job of transferring the power to the tires and onto the road. The only thing that's holding back this particular car are the winter tires. They don't have that much grip and I can very easily set off the ABS under moderate braking. The steering is also pretty nice, it's direct and responsive, and you can change it between sport, which makes it heavier feeling, 
or normal, which makes it lighter feeling. You do have normal, sport, and individual drive modes. Around twisty roads like the one that I'm driving right now, the Civic Si feels quite playful. It likes to be tossed around from corner to corner. It feels like a puppy with tons and tons of energy. It's a lot of fun. The Honda Civic Si has stiffer suspension compared to the standard Honda Civic as is to be expected, but the ride has not been sacrificed in the name of sporty driving characteristics. Yes, big bumps feel rough, but overall, this is still a comfortable daily commuter. Sound insulation has been drastically improved in this new generation Civic over the old one. Engine, wind, and tire noises barely intrude into the cabin when driving around city streets. Road noise, however, is a bit more prevalent on highways. When switching the car into sport mode, there are enhanced, quote unquote, engine noises being played through the audio system. Now looking at the interior of the Civic Si, it looks exactly the same as the standard Civic, with the exception of these brilliant Si seats and the little red highlights throughout the cabin. But firstly, starting off with these seats, they are very comfortable. Tons of padding, so they are really good for long road trips or those long daily commutes. But they're also quite supportive. Unfortunately, they do not have adjustable lumbar, but they do have a little bit of lumbar built into them, so it doesn't feel like as though my lower back is sticking way out into the back seats. Additionally, they are fully manually adjustable. There's no power options whatsoever, but the driver's seat does have height adjustments, so you can move it up and down. The passenger does not. And as I said, the rest of the interior is standard Civic. I do like the little red highlights around the air vents as well as the door panels and you get red stitching on the steering wheel and the shifter. Overall, the interior is very straightforward to use. Tons of physical controls and rotary knobs and also, although the cup holders do get in the way of you shifting, they are really deep. So a medium drink fits in there just fine. It will not get into the way of you shifting. Maybe a large or an extra large it might start to touch your forearm here, but medium drinks, perfectly fine. Now, I can't talk about the interior without mentioning the fact that the Canadian spec of the SI does have more features than the American spec SI. So we get a full digital driver display with shift lights, a larger 9-inch touchscreen, a heated steering wheel, and heated seats all around. Now, why are they different between the two markets? Well, to the best of my knowledge, I think it's because in Canada, the Civic Si is considered a top spec trim apart from the Type R. But in the United States, the Civic Si is one trim below the Touring. So the Touring is the top spec trim in the United States apart from the Type R again. So I think that's why there's that discrepancy. And finally, interior space with the Civic being a lot larger than the previous generations, at six foot four, I have plenty of it. No problems with legroom, no, no problems with headroom either. So with that, let's go check out the back seats now. Now, it could just be my imagination, but it does feel like as though the Civic Si has a little bit less leg space than the standard Civic. And I think it's because of these bigger Si seats. They look much more chunkier. And as a result, it is taking away a little bit of my leg space. Now, Again, the seat is in my above average height of six foot four, so more average size adults should have a little bit more leg space in these back seats. But for me, it's a little on the tight side. As for headroom, my hair is brushing up against the headliner, but then this bench seat is making you sit a little bit higher up than in the front when the seats are at their lowest position. However, speaking of that, legroom or Room for my feet is just fine, even with this seat at its lowest point. And as I mentioned earlier, the outboard seats in the back here are heated. You get a couple of USB ports and the cup holders are right here in this armrest. Behind the seats, the 2023 Honda Civic Si has 408 liters of cargo volume, with more available by folding down those rear seats.
As I mentioned a few minutes ago, in Canada, the 2023 Honda Civic Si is considered the top spec trim of the new generation Civic, ignoring the Type R that is. As a result, it has a price of $35,630 Canadian, which is not too expensive in my opinion given how much car prices have gone up in recent memory. For the money, there are not too many other convenience features that I haven't already mentioned before. The infotainment system is straightforward to use with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. There's a wireless phone charging pad in the front of the shifter and a standard size sunroof. On the safety front, the Civic Si is well equipped. Unlike Hondas in the past, I have not experienced any issues with false readings when it came to the forward collision alert warning or the blind spot sensors. Lane keeping assist was a bit intrusive during more spirited drives, but that was my fault for getting too close to the inside of each corner. The Honda Civic also received a top safety pick from the IIHS. So what more can I say about the Civic Si? Playful driving characteristics, tons of space on the inside, and reasonably priced at $35,000 Canadian, $30,000 for those of you south of the 49th parallel. It's a fun but not so little car anymore could it be my car of the year i don't know you'll have to wait and see my year in review at the end of the year but in the meantime if you would like to know more about this 2023 honda civic si i have a written review with a few more details about it over on my website you can find that link in the video description or click on the pop-up banner right up here and as always i will see you in the next car or truck or most likely it'll be an suv next time Anyway, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and see you in the next one. Yeah.